Hey you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I'm going to share with you my first quarter homeschooling update, all of the curriculum changes that I have made so far in my homeschooling year. So if any of you guys are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I am a homeschooling mom to three girls, ages 10, four, and two, and I'm in my third year of homeschool. So you guys, in today's video, I'm primarily going to be talking about the curriculum changes that I have made so far in my homeschool. I feel like it's definitely a trend on YouTube right now where a lot of homeschooling moms are sharing their curriculum changes that, I, that they have made like so far in their homeschooling year. And I really feel that what is happening is that we as homeschooling moms, we make all of these big and grand plans, but when it comes time to actually execute those plans, we find out very quickly what is working and what is not working in our homeschool. So just like everyone else, I too have had to make some adjustments and changes within my homeschool. And I'm gonna go ahead, you guys, and share with you all of those changes that I have made so far in today's video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the biggest change. This may be a surprise to some of you guys, but I went ahead and I stopped our Gather Round Artist Unit. You guys, we had fun with the lessons that we did do within this Gather Round Unit, but overall, I really didn't find it to be the greatest fit for me and for our homeschool. I definitely see why a lot of people do enjoy Gather Round. It just didn't work out for us, and I really feel like that's okay. Um, I think that that's the beauty of homeschooling is we do get an opportunity to try new things and I'm happy I tried something new and uh yeah so you guys I went back to like my original plan when it has come to like art and art study in my homeschool so we are going to continue doing the live and art lessons studying the seven elements of art through master books we're going to continue out this curriculum throughout our homeschooling year we actually do art two times a month so we alternate them every other Friday and it's really been working out for me in my homeschool so we are going to go ahead and just stick with this art study and we are going to finish this baby out throughout the rest of our homeschooling year. Uh, so far Brielle really has enjoyed the art lessons that we did do in um, this living art lessons and um, I'm just happy to continue uh, using something that I know and I know that works out for us in our homeschool. Something else that I went ahead and I added in our homeschool, if you guys see my planning video, you would probably have already seen this book. It is called Come Look With Me, Discovering African American Art for Children. So I really love this uh, book because it actually is a picture study book and it goes over different artists. It gives you like a history of the artist. It gives you like picture study questions you can ask your kiddos and then it goes over the actual art. Um, I really, really enjoyed this series and I I really enjoy this simple way for us to incorporate picture study in our homeschool. This series has so many different types of arts and art forms in these little uh, mini books that you can pick up for you and for your kiddos. They have one on all different types of art. You guys, I was so amazed by the plethora of this collection. I definitely want to collect more uh, when we are doing picture study in our homeschool, but this is the first one that I picked up. And so far, we really have been enjoying doing our picture study and our art when we do it on our um, alternating Fridays. So um, back to like our original plan when it has come to art. So you guys, now as far as math, Saxon math, it has been going great. Uh, Nicole, the math lady, you guys, she is my BFF because she definitely has came in my homeschool last year and she really has changed it up when it has come to like math. Uh, it definitely is a great fit for Brielle and I'm so happy. You guys, we are so close to finishing Saxon. I know we're probably gonna be finished with it within the next few weeks. And uh, I will definitely update you guys as we finish it, what our plan of attack is going to be moving forward. Um, I am really contemplating on waiting until January for us to start Saxon 7-6 and just to kind of review in 6-5 before then, or we might just go on into Saxon 7-6. It really just depends, but overall we love Saxon, it's great. 
So um, now we're gonna go ahead and talk about language arts. So you guys, this year I am not doing like a all-in-one language arts where everything is all built in together for me. I do have like a separate literature, grammar, vocabulary, and a writing curriculum. So all of those pieces are separate for me and I'm finding I have really been enjoying having my language arts separated because it's really fun adding and picking out those different moving parts within my homeschool. So for First and foremost, you guys, we have finished our Brave Writer Literature Guide on The Lemonade War. And you guys, first of all, this book is so stinking cute. It was funny. Uh, it definitely kept us on cliffhangers. I really, really enjoyed this book, The Lemonade War. I will go ahead and give you guys like a little brief synopsis of this uh, without giving you too many spoilers, but I will let you know it does have some sibling rivalry in this book. And I know a lot of people don't like their kiddos to read books with like some sibling rivalry but I really enjoyed the way the author ended this and I really enjoyed the way that the author allowed this um the siblings to be able to figure out their uh I guess figure out their disagreements and come together on their own without actually needing their parents to help them with it. So overall, we enjoyed this book. I enjoyed using Brave Writer. It was definitely a very open-ended like literature guide. I really enjoyed how um, organically she added in like grammar and literary elements and Brielle really enjoyed it. I enjoyed like all of the uh, big juicy questions. Uh, it just really helped my hand and got guiding this uh, particular book, The Lemonade War. And I'm definitely going to add maybe a few more of the Brave Writer literature guides throughout the rest of our homeschooling year. I'm not too sure how many we're going to do, but I definitely want to add in a couple more. Um, so we really, really enjoyed it. And I definitely want to make a separate video about my overall review and kind of showing you all of the writing projects and things that Brie got up to when we did our Brave Writers literature guide. So Brave Writer, Definitely two thumbs up. Now, um, as far as English goes still, we started Wordly Wise. Wordly Wise, great thumbs up. Um, I definitely can see why a lot of people do love and enjoy Wordly Wise. These vocabulary words in this Wordly Wise is pretty challenging, but I love it. Um, I definitely can see Brielle's vocabulary uh, improving, and I love the way they break down each and every definition. So Wordly Wise, great addition, I love it. So as far as our uh, main grammar and writing, you guys, we went ahead and we started IEW. And oh my goodness, I have so much to say about this curriculum. Um, I don't wanna make this particular video too long. I do, I definitely have to update you guys on this IEW. It is great. Um, I love it. Brielle loves it. I didn't know how she was going to um, like the video lessons because some of the video lessons are pretty lengthy. Her Nicole the math lessons, uh, video lessons are like five to seven minutes. But her lessons as far as her writing instructions with Andrew Pudawal, they are 30 minutes long. And I didn't know how she was going to feel sitting in like a lecture like that, but she absolutely enjoyed it. They sit down to do their uh, lecture for the first two days and then the rest of the days they are working on either their keyword outline, their rough draft, their final draft. Um, I love the parents guide in IEW because it really holds my hand when it's coming to like actually grading Brielle's writing. Like before I never really knew like how and what checkpoints I need to be looking at her writing at her age and now with IEW I have all of those like particular checklists what I'm actually looking for in her writing and this has been great. I definitely need to make an updated video, really going a uh, deep dive into this for you guys. But so far, uh, after doing this curriculum for over a little over a month, great. We love it. Along with IEW, you guys, we are doing Fix It Grammar. Again, I love Fix It Grammar. We did Fix It Grammar last year. Uh, one thing I will say, you guys, I absolutely love the updates that they made. I love how they have the kiddos just editing like one sentence a day. And I love how clean these pages are. And Brielle definitely loves it. She does like more than one week in, um, she does more than a week in a week's time. So um, I went ahead, you guys, and I added back in for Brielle 
Rod and Staff. And honestly, I added in Rod and Staff for Brielle because she absolutely begged me to do Rod and Staff. You guys, Brie, if you're not new here to my channel, you know how much this girl loves English. And I went ahead and I just... You know, I was really trying to lighten her load. I really wanted her to have more opportunities to do like organic forms of writing. I really wanted her to have more time to do that. But I'm finding that Brielle just wants more English. She wants more English and more literature. So that is what I'm giving this baby girl. So we are actually doing two grammar programs again this homeschooling year. She is loving it. And I'm just going to give this baby what she likes. And you guys, I love a rod and staff so much. This is such a simple yet thorough grammar program. It's old school and I definitely want to really show you guys and capture this curriculum for it's like beauty. And um, I know not a lot of people actually use like Rod and Staff because it is an older curriculum, but it's very thorough. It's mastery and your kiddos will leave this grammar curriculum knowing diagrams. And it's, you know, it's crazy because it's like it's thorough, but then it's gentle because um, they are just taking in little bite-sized pieces at a time and as they build upon each other it's great it's so great so uh, Rod and Staff we definitely love this uh, grammar curriculum so that is everything when it comes to like our full English language arts because again it's separated out now you guys we actually went ahead and we started our beautiful feet early American history and this right here is the intermediate guide. Now you guys, we actually are on the indigenous people's unit, which is the first unit within this um, beautiful feet curriculum. And I will say, I absolutely love this curriculum. It is great, but it's a couple of adjustments that I already made within this curriculum. And I'm gonna go ahead and share those with you guys. So um, I will go ahead and say this Beautiful Feet is a literature based curriculum. If you don't know anything about Beautiful Feet, uh, they give you like a plethora of books you are going to be reading throughout the course of this study as we are going over these different sections. They actually have each section in this early American history broken up. We are going to be going over the indigenous people the golden age of discovery, the colonies, the revolutionary war, uh, the young people or the young United States, which is just like United States just starting off. And then we are going to end this unit on the civil war. So I love the breakdown. I love the literature that they have selected. One thing I absolutely love so far has been this little part right here. And hopefully you guys can see it where it gives me like all of the rabbit trail books that we can uh, go ahead and check out from our library to add into this curriculum. Um, so I definitely love that aspect of this Beautiful Feet curriculum. What I don't like about this curriculum is this child's first American history, uh, this a uh, child's first American history book. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I really feel like Beautiful Feet needs to reevaluate the use of this particular reference book within their overall curriculum. I feel like this particular reference book does not do a great representation of history and how we actually study it in this day and age. Um, I definitely will say this book does not give any credit or justice to the indigenous people. I don't like the depiction of the indigenous people in this book. I don't like the way they talk about indigenous peoples so far in this book. Um, if you actually purchase Beautiful Feet, I definitely will say as a parent, please read this before you present this information to your kiddos. I actually really felt uncomfortable uh, with this overall reference book. So I didn't toss this baby in the trash. What I did was I decided to replace this reference book with the DK Encyclopedia book that I actually have in my homeschool. I have been using this DK American History uh, book for a while and I absolutely love the layout. It actually doesn't affect me using this Beautiful Feet Literature Guide because all I do is whenever it refers me to use this book, which is not that often, I just go ahead and find whatever time period we're on and we utilize our, our DK American Encyclopedia and it definitely is a better representation of the indigenous people. And I love this book a whole lot better. Um, I love the way this book is broken down. And um, 
this is just a minor adjustment that I did go ahead and make as far as beautiful feet. Um, I really hope that in the future, beautiful feet will consider possibly using more of their rabbit trail books like this book right here, which is called Turtle Island, you guys. This is a great book depicting uh, and talking about indigenous people and it is a great reference book. And I really hope that they will consider maybe changing out some of their rabbit trail books for some of their main reference books when it comes to studying indigenous people. So that is the only thing that I have seen so far. Other than that, you guys, I absolutely love the other literature that act, the main literature pieces that they picked out. I love it. I love this guide. I love the comprehension questions. I love the notebooking. Uh, that is just like one little adjustment that I did make. So if you do have this curriculum, just uh, keep that in mind. I definitely want to let you guys know um, about that. Now, as I move forward within this uh, beautiful feat early American history, I will let you know if I see any other like red flags or any other things that I feel like I should bring attention to. Um, I feel like history can be hard sometimes, but but it doesn't have to be, especially when we have like all these beautiful living book resources that we can grab our hands on nowadays. So um, it still has been a great and awesome curriculum. So beautiful feet. Now, as far as my other curriculum, because this is a heavy history year for us, I really haven't done a lot of history as far as Brielle. Our, our first two homeschooling years, we really focused a lot on like geography, state study. Uh, we had a lot of fun as far as those things. So this is a heavy history year. I went ahead and I added in this heart and soul curriculum from Heritage Mom Blog. And we actually started this one out and it has been an amazing fit. It's so crazy how these pair so well together Together. and um, it's just been a great way for me to incorporate more of that diversity that I'm looking for within my homeschool. Um, I definitely will recommend anyone to just get this book right here this heart and soul book if you want to go ahead and start off doing like a gentle history especially if you have like maybe a second or a third grader this heart and soul book will be a great introduction to American history. And I definitely would recommend if you don't do anything, at least get this baby because it is great. We actually uh, just finished off chapter two, which went over slavery. And uh, this was my daughter's first time being introduced to slavery formally. And I love the words in this book. It was beautiful. It was gentle. But it was truthful and i really felt like she left understanding it but she didn't feel uh oppressed or she didn't feel uh like down i really felt like it was uh ingestible bite-sized information for her as we are continuing with american history so great book i love this resource so you guys, that really is all of like my updates as far as Brie Brie goes. The only thing we haven't added in into like our homeschooling year yet has been our music curriculum, which is Living Harmonies from Thistles and Biscuits. And we still haven't added in science. So as we enter in our second six week term, I definitely know I wanna go ahead and add in those last two bits of our curriculum. And then we will officially be doing like our full load as far as, um, our homeschooling goals you guys so far our homeschooling days have been ending pretty early we've been ending anywhere between like 1 30 12 and 1 30 because brielle's been starting homeschool early like 7 a.m brielle is in this homeschool room doing her math because she definitely likes to have those free afternoons and i'm finding she is so much more independent and motivated because a lot of her curriculum except for like her history bible and science that's the only thing she really needs me for everything else brielle has definitely been a go-getter this year and i definitely see her uh, wanting and uh taking charge of her homeschool her you know education and i love it i love seeing her like feel like she can do these things on her own because eventually i do want her to get to that point where she does feel comfortable being independent especially as i'm adding in my younger ones so for my younger ones you guys i right here have their gentle and classical preschool it's been going great um they really have been having fun as far as their homeschooling goes um i'm finding or i was finding in the beginning it was a little bit challenging as i was adding in Leia into the mix officially but now you guys Leia knows when it's her time to do school she's so excited she's so enthusiastic um 
so she, they definitely have been enjoying it alana my two-year-old she is like tagging along she is trying to do all the things with all the big girls and it's so funny and so cute seeing her trying to do all the things and i just incorporate her as much as i can especially when it comes to like my preschool read aloud time and things like that um as far as leia goes she definitely has started speech therapy and that has changed our schedule around when it comes to our fridays not too much but i'm um happy that we're kind of like getting into that rhythm so you guys this was my homeschooling update i hope you enjoy seeing all the changes that I have made so far if you guys made changes so far in your homeschool it's okay <laughs> We got this. We are still going to have good and amazing, strong homeschooling years. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.